Uh, well, hello everyone. This is Bill Acevedo, your product manager for OMNM, and this is Tech Talk with OMNM version 8, powered by Cruise Operations Center. So today's session is about uh, zero touch provisioning. And so this is going to be the process from a device being plugged into the network all the way through bringing it into management automatically uh, within the product. So let's start off with this just <coughs> excuse me, describe the process of how this is going to work. So this is going to start off with a DHCP server. And we'll get into that in just a minute. The DHCP server is going to provide an IP address to the device and it's going to provide a configuration file. And within that configuration file, there's going to be information about the device in terms of um, its login credentials for SNMP, login credentials for uh, CLI as well. It's also going to have an instruction to say, send traps. Once you boot up, send all your traps to the OMNM instance. And once we start getting these traps, this is going to trigger the default automation process within uh, within OMNM. Our automation rules, this is, this is a standard type behavior where we can trigger just about any automation based on an event trigger, it could be a syslog, could be an alarm, trap, um, um, even an audit trail can, can trigger these uh, um, types of automations. Now what happens is we have an automation rule set up here and I'll just explore this so you can get a feel for um, what it's doing. So we're going to have a simple rule set up here. We're going to enable this. I'm going to go ahead and enable that now. Uh, we basically say any event com that comes in, we want to trigger this action. So we don't want to put any events in this particular field here. When a device comes up, it, it, will, it will spew out a variety of events or traps. We don't care what it is. We just want to make sure that when we get it, uh, that, that we, we're going to recognize it initially as an unknown trap is what we call it, meaning it's not attached to a known managed object within OMNM. So um, um, that's going to allow us to trigger and go and, and discover it. So how does that happen? Uh, we basically have some filter conditions set up here that these top two basically identify this as an unknown trap, meaning the protocol is not SNMP v1, v2, is, or I'm sorry, it's not, a part, it's not a system, meaning an internal type trap. And then it is not also um, specified, meaning that it is uh, a non-managed device. Now, for the sake of this demo, I put in, a source IP as a further delimiter so that I don't trigger this on other devices that are coming, other traps that are coming in, only if I get it from this device. Now, I know it's just going to be this IP because that's what I know my DHCP scope is, and I know it's going to allocate this IP. So it's this is what's going to further filter what we trigger our action on. And so the action then becomes an action to um, go and execute a specific discovery profile. So this action is in your actions. You simply go over to actions and you can search for it on actions. But once you put it in here, um, there are some parameters here. You can you can see how how um, what it's doing here. So you're gonna you're gonna um, basically we've identified the action, um, execute the discovery profile for a single device. This is for a single IP. Now if you're scanning. Uh, if you're getting traps from multiple subnets or a subnet, you can also, there's one also for subnets, but this one is just from a single IP address. Um, so as many devices that come in that are of a single IP from in the trap, it'll have one IP, it will trigger this action. And the action is to go and execute a device auto discovery. This is just a profile. And we'll look at that profile, but it's just like any other discovery profile. It's going to contain the credentials that are in that config file that the device is getting. It's going to have the SNMP CLI, and it's going to have that instruction, um, as I mentioned, to send those traps. But uh, that's all you need to, to in your discovery profile to pick this up. And so these are the parameters that will be populated from the trap down below here. You don't need to do anything here. So let's go look at that discovery profile next here. Oh, I didn't save that. Let's go ahead and enable that because we're going to be running this in just a minute here. We want this to be kicked off by a trap that comes in. So let's go look at that discovery profile. And it was this number two option. So it's like any other profile. You define a variety of parameters in here, just like a, any other profile, and you don't give it an IP address. That's going to come in from the trap that's going to trigger this. And then we have the authentication credentials that are going to allow us to discover that device. So that's really all there is to it on the discovery profile side. Now back to my demo page here. I've collected these portlets on one page for this demo so that it's easier to show. 
Um, and so here's the action. Uh, there's really nothing to look at here. You just use this action and specify the target profile. That's, what, that's the action that was set over here in the automation rule. Now what you'll notice down below here is I've got to manage resources. This is basically filtering for the device that I think we're going to discover today automatically. It's 54.249. You'll notice that there's when I click enter and try to search for it, it's not in here. It's not in inventory. And then I also have an event history portlet that we're going to be looking at, uh, waiting for these traps to come in to trigger our process. But let's go look at the DHCP server now, because um, that is the first step in the process here. I think I have that on the back here. So here's our um, here's our DHCP server. Like any DHCP server, you're going to give it a scope here. This is uh, going from 54.240 to 54.250. Here's my leases. This one was done previously. I'm going to delete that for now because that device is no longer allocated. Um, and so you'll see here, what we'll see here is 249 coming in when it, when it ultimately gets triggered. A um, few other things here. The scope options are the kind of the main area here that allow you to set this up. So you come in here, option 66 is the boot server host name. This is the file server, FTP or TFTP, where you're getting the source files. And so I'm just specifying it's the same server here. You'll notice that this saying Win217, that's the host name of this box. So I'm just specifying the host name for this, identifying this box as the target for the files. And then we got to give a boot file name. And so it's going to boot from this config gen one dot config file. You do need the dot config ending on there. And then the second part here is option 150 where we actually give it the IP address of the TFTP server. Again, it's this box here, 54.217. You'll see that up here. That's this box. The other options aren't that important here at this point. Just it is important to know that you could also have the device come up with a new firmware or an operating system if it's a server. But uh, there's other options in here that you can set to tell it to also get the firmware image off of that TFTP server as well. Today, we're just getting the config file and auto discovering the device. So let's look at that config file. Again, this is my uh, local box here. So here's the file. It's this config gen one. And we can take a quick look at it. I didn't do a lot of uh, pruning of this device. Uh, it's basically a full config file from another box, but um, I can show you the, the key points of this here. Uh, we go into interface VLAN 1, IP is set to IP address DHCP. That's what's going to give us our, um, um, our ability for DHCP to give it an IP address. Uh, we've also set Uh, so Giggy 101 is blank. That's going to be probably where our um, interface gets set here. But um, the other parts of this are, I'm going to scroll down here. Again, there's a lot of stuff here. I'm going to get this whole config file. I want to give it, I want to know here these, the uh, community strings in here. So this is, what we, this is what we put into our config file. Uh, we're using QA public. That's our SNMP string. And then we're telling it to send traps also to the target of my, my box here, which is 54.71 using QA public here. So um, that's uh, that's key here. We need to get those traps. We need to have that line here. All this other stuff could be stripped out. I didn't do it for this demo here. And then finally, we have things like, uh, you know, the banner and different things being set here. I could say uh, he is OMNM zero touch provisioning just to kind of get that in there. Um, but then at the bottom here, you see uh, there is an enable password here as well. So that also needs to be to correspond. So you generally just need those elements of your configuration file. Um, save that. And so um, that's, the, that's, the, that's the configuration that's going to load up here. So what do we need to do here to kick this off to see that discovery? And we're going to go over to an RDP console I have right into that server. Oh, this one here. And so what we'll see is that I'm, at, I'm, right, I'm currently at the part where I can reboot this server. And so, or I'm sorry, this, uh, this switch. This is an N1528, I believe, or 15, N15XX series. Um, but I'm going to say uh, we want to restore to factory defaults. Yes. And then that sort of already tells me here up here that I've already erased the config. So now I'm going to go down and do a reboot. Now, don't we don't touch this console from here on out. It's going to go do everything. So um, you'll notice in the background here, I'm, uh, if I have it here, 
I was pinging that IP address just so we can kind of see when that comes online. You'll see it is offline there. Um, at some point, we'll see this um, this DHCP lease start coming in with 249. Will show up in here, and then what, we're, what we what we do expect to see here is we'll start seeing question mark traps in here. They'll have a question mark, a yellow question mark in here. That was going to trigger. We expect to see those start to come in. We expect this to be triggered, calling that action. That action invokes that discovery profile, and then we're going to see the device discovered here. So we can step back a little bit here and see. Uh, what it's doing. The longest part here is is uh, watching this the box come back up. It probably is going to take about a couple of three minutes for it to go through this process. Unfortunately, we have to wait the 60 seconds at this step. Should be getting close here. Okay, you'll see in the background here that is already uh, starting to reply on that IP address. I do have it over here on my Lease option here. We can go back to our screen here, and uh, we can start looking for traps. Here we have our traps coming in. So right now this is going out and invoking again that process, triggering that action to call that profile, and there we go. You'll see that we've already got the device in here, and uh, and it's being managed. So now you could do any other option, uh, any other um, executed now. Um, and so it's fully manageable. Uh, you can treat it like any other device at this point. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. Um, that's kind of a quick run through on the DHCP process. I do want to thank everyone for watching. If you have questions, uh, feel free to, uh, to uh, contact me at this address here, sales at dell-momentum.com. Or if you want a free trial, feel free to try it out. Um, just uh, you can send any kind of contact or request for information to this email address. Thank you.